Humans of the Cardboard, welcome back to Just Nuts, guys. Today we've got insect support. Uh, if you guys don't know, I am a big fan of the insect archetype. Uh, bee Troopers, you know, it, it kind of didn't end up being a pure Bee Trooper deck. It ended up being combined with a bunch of other generic good insect stuff. Um, but the deck hasn't been good since it lost uh, Vertanaconda and its access to DPE. I would love to see a replacement for that, like an easy link to that's like pretty insect locked that kind of just would give them a decent payoff um, that they can go into even after being disrupted, um, which would be really cool and give them a solid like just kind of like core play they can do even if everything else gets interrupted, kind of like Hieratic Seal of Heavenly Spears for Dragon Link. But we'll see. We've got a couple cards here. We've got the new uh, V-Jump promo, of course. And then we're going to jump over to uh, two new insect slash plant support cards that got revealed for uh, uh, Photon Hypernova. So, yeah. Starting off here, we've got our Beetle Amalgamaton Zek Stagger. Very cool. His artwork is very, very awesome. He looks like a um, Power Ranger Megazord looking guy, but insecty. All right, here we go. He's a level 8 wind insect monster, 1,500 attack, 2,600 defense. You can only use his first and third effect once per turn each. The first effect reads, if an insect monster or monsters is special summoned, you can special summon this card from the hand. Okay, you know, that's pretty good. Doesn't summon from grave as well. That would have made this card really good and maybe even a staple because turn after turn be able to come back every turn. Um, but still being able to extend Excel from hand fairly easily is pretty good. This can also chain block certain other effects, like any insect that would be activating an effect on summon. This card could chain block, which is cool. Um, but yeah. Uh, second effect. Gains 300 attack for every other insect or monster on the field. Um, that's not too crazy. Uh, most scenarios, he's only going to be gaining two, uh, or sorry, six, maybe 900. Um, which it still doesn't even get that big. It only gets him up to 24 at most, but whatever. I guess he was 15, which is pretty small, but he could get to over 2,000 at least fairly easily, so we'll take it. And the third effect, during each end phase, each player can special summon one insect monster from their hand or graveyard, but its effects are negated. Um, the negated part makes it pretty tough. Um, for sure. But that doesn't mean it's dead. There are still uh, options like a Goki pull you might have gone through, a Resonance that you didn't banish but is still engraved, just to get it back on field so that way the next time it leaves the field it gets you another resource as well. Same but for both of those. Um, and maybe even throw um, Retaliating Sea in there as well, another card that w is normally played in the Bee Trooper deck or the Insect deck in general. Uh, when it leaves the field it searches a level 4 Earth Insect with I think less than 1500 attack something like that um but yeah so like sure get those back and they do float so that's like kind of cool um but to be honest like you'd rather be using this card for material for synchro summons link summons whatever you don't really want to end on this on the field because like what's it really doing for your end board not a lot um it's just kind of mediocre so all in all, I think it's a fine extender, but it's not doing anything. It's not changing the game here. Like I said before, if this effect was a hand or graveyard to summon himself, uh, then it would have been way better because then it means like you go through him turn one and now for the rest of the duel, every time you summon an insect, he is not only a body, but a big body, high level, and helps you can just keep like having material throughout the course of a duel if a duel ever goes a little bit longer. Uh, but unfortunately, he doesn't. So he's just okay to me. Uh, insects already have a handful of extenders. Maybe he power creeps some of them, but nothing so crazy that I'm, I'm over the moon about. So fine card, but not bad. Or not, not uh, you know, not great. All right, now we move to two more new cards. The One of these is an insect. Uh, the first one here is Hexenringe Summoner Fairy. Fairy? It's a level three wind insect tuner. A tuner. We've kind of seen a little bit of messins around with also like um, insect builds that also like to synchro summon a little bit. Uh, they do have a, a couple of decent just generic tuner insect monsters and this could be in addition to that and maybe there could be a more synchro centric build where this card becomes a, a more useful tool in. But yeah, 800 attack, 1500 defense. Uh, you can only special summon him with his first effect once per turn. That effect reads, if there is an insect and or plant monster in the graveyard, you can special summon this card from the hand. Nice. I mean, <laughs> to be honest, like, that's really sweet. What I like about this is that not only, this doesn't even require you a monster on field, it's just 
any insect or plant in grave. So even after your board's been wiped, even after you've been to Beirut, plop this card on the field and go from there. That's pretty cool. I like that a lot. Um, there are a lot of decks in Yu-Gi-Oh where they're okay, but they could be way better if they had ways to play through getting their early monsters removed from the field. Uh, stuff like Virtual World, which can just struggle if they don't have a face-up Virtual World card on the field, right? Uh, this is kind of one of those cards that like kind of extends in a really neat way that we, we don't see all that often. This is a very different um, requirement for a summon, which is very cool. Secondly, if this card you control is used as synchro material for an insect or a plant monster specifically, you can treat it as a non-tuner. That's just nice flexibility, to be honest. That's kind of like the, the icing on the cake there. Uh, mainly, it's just an extender tuner that's pretty good. But um, we'll take it, I mean, for sure. I mean, the fact that you could be playing, you know, you could have another tuner on field, right? This card looks a little awkward because you have two tuners. Boom, you turn into a non-tuner. Cool. Um, that being said, there's not many great insect tuner monsters uh, or plants either. Or synchro, sorry. Uh, plant or uh, insect synchro monsters. So maybe down the line if we get like a crazy good not even generic, but at least plant or insect locked like synchro monster for either of those, then maybe this card becomes a little more interesting. But all in all, it's still just a decent generic extender, all things considered. And maybe down the line, if we do get that synchro support for insects or plants, this card would be looked at even harder, but we'll see. And then the new uh, synchro to pair with it is called Circle of Fairy. Uh, it's this guy here, very cool. Uh, this is a level 7 wind uh, plant synchro effect monster. So this one is a plant, but the girl is an insect. I think it's a girl. Yeah, I think that's a girl. Um, uh, synchro effect monster. 2200 attack, 2500 defense, one tuner, one non-tuner. So completely generic for a synchro. You can only use the second effect of this card once per turn. First effect, during your main phase, you can normal summon one insect or plant monster in addition to your normal summon slash set. You can only gain this effect once per turn. Fine, gives you an extra normal summon, but like, I don't know, still kind of requires you to have a good normal summonable monster in hand. So I don't like that unless you have a combo. Like unless there's a specific combo line where you use your normal, make this card, and throughout the combo before, prior to making this card, you already search another good monster normal summon and then this extra normal summons it out but as far as insects go we already have armor horn which is going to be generically way easier to make than this card because you just need any two insects not even any tuners or anything um and like kind of offers that as well but even more extension after that by reviving itself so i don't know i guess that's fine it may seem like more plant supporty than insect supporty but i don't know um, and the second effect, when a monster or monster is destroyed by a battle involving your insect or plant monster and is sent to the graveyard, target one of those, uh, target one of them and inflict damage to your opponent equal to half the attack it had on field, then you gain life points equal to the damage inflicted. That's fine. This effect is whatever. It's a battle phase effect, which is always like, it needs to be really powerful if it's going to be a battle phase effect. Um, this one is not particularly, in fact, it doesn't even help you kill anything, uh, removal wise, it just helps you burn if you do kill something, uh, which is fine, I guess, uh, you know, spread the life points out there between your, you and your opponent, but nothing crazy. I think this card is the most mediocre of the three, to be honest. I think the two extenders have a little bit more merit there. I'll keep an eye on it though. This is definitely one of those situations where, you know, if Konami is going to come through in the next, you know, 12 months, two years and give bee troopers another little wave we've seen them do this right we just got evil eye support generator support those archetypes those archetypes are only two three years old konami's come back and given them really good cards for the archetype if we get you know a specific extract monster that's a payoff that makes these two specific like extenders like way more valid then we'll come back and look at them but for now they're just stuff we're going to stick in our back pocket and wait until we get more stuff to see if they come through as important extenders for the deck later on but yeah, that's, I think, pretty much where we end up here. Uh, pretty cool. I mean, nothing crazy, but like interesting stuff that could come up down the line for sure. Uh, obviously, I'll keep you guys updated. I think this puts us at almost 30 cards left for Photon Hypernova. Still, again, 10 days left. We're, we're going to be getting, at, on average, three cards a day throughout the last 10 days here. Um, and uh, should be getting close to like Trap Tricks reveals pretty soon. We should be getting like the final 12 cards for uh, Darkwing Blast, maybe even tomorrow 
or Friday. Uh, so stay tuned. we got a lot of news coming up very shortly here. I will keep you updated on anything that drops that is of any importance. And I will keep you guys posted there. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts down below. If you are an insect fan, let me know if there's any other specific interactions that I didn't mention here between these two. Um, between like these two cards. And um, yeah, let me know. Let me know down below. I'll see you in the next one. Appreciate